Hello everyone, this is a tutorial for the Mass Effects version 3 add-on. I went ahead and ported the tool for Blender 2.8. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to set this up. Um, to get started, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the objects I'm going to drop the sets on are have a rigid body um, enabled and the type are set to passive. If your ground has some deformation, uh, I would mess with the collision shape and usually you would change this to mesh and enable deforming, but depending on what the shape of your ground or uh, object, you can, you can change those settings, but for now I'm going to set this to box, box, and now you can spawn you can spawn your objects from collection so I went ahead and grouped these three um, items as a collection called cubes so if I select the ground and I hit start you can go ahead and choose that collection and then you'll see that the brush starts to preview what you're going to be uh, populating within your scene so in order to change the options for for your brush, hold the Alt key and then move the mouse to the panel and then let go of the Alt key. That way you can see what changes are being made to that brush. You can choose between uh, dropping your, your assets or painting them individually. You have two two tabs, one being brush and the other is physics tab where you're provided with a friendly user UI of the physics settings. For the brush, um, the brush is particle based so uh, the particle settings are, are um, simplified within this panel. Jittered, random, grid, Random grid. You could spawn as a grid or just have random, um, randomize the points for the brush. Spawn count. You could change the the amount of items you want to um, drop. For for a random seed, if you have this enabled. It will go ahead and randomize the seed value. So I'm going to go ahead and start by dropping these. Oh. No way I got Probably because it's a box. I'm going to change this to convex hole. Convex hole. Okay, let's do that one more time. Cubes. And change the spawn count and then like I said if random seed is enabled it's going to randomize the seed as you paint or drop your objects so if I go ahead and you see that your objects are, are you see that your objects are dropped right away as you click so if you for for the drop tool if you go ahead and click and hold the more you the more you hold it and while moving the mouse the more the the simulation will will scrub so and then once you release it will apply it automatically uh, join is enabled so if I disable that you'll notice that it no longer joins your objects afterwards you could change um, the way it applies the the um, dropped objects. So, if I change, uh, if I change this to apply on to right click, it will no longer apply on release. It will actually wait until you right click the mouse and then apply it for you. Now for, I'm gonna go ahead and disable random seed for now. And then I'll enable this once we get to painting. So another thing I wanted to show you guys is 
uh, of random randomizing the rotation uh, you could randomize this as well and then they will random this will randomize the the rotations a bit you can also increase the speed of the simulation so if I put something like 20 you'll notice that the objects are falling a lot faster now for paint mode you can spawn your objects individually so and then you just hold the control key and then move the mouse around the cursor around it will continue scrubbing for you it will scrub through the timeline and then once you you get the result you want you right click and it'll apply that I would uh, recommend using the, uh, apply on right click for painting and and then release for uh, dropping your objects because otherwise you'll get some floating objects that haven't hit the ground and then they will apply it without um, making sure it they fell completely. Alright, let's go ahead and delete those. Another thing I wanted to show you is uh, you could use a custom brush. So the the default brush is a simple cube. And instead of using the cube, you can use your own shape. So if I go ahead and Make a shape right here and then enable custom brush and start. Um, go ahead and choose cubes, and then you'll notice that it takes up that, that shape that you used, and then you can spawn your assets from that shape. So, if I go ahead and begin painting notice that you can drop a bunch of objects at once um, depending on your your memory um, blender can get pretty laggy with rigid body simulations so I would suggest uh, not increasing the spawn count too much and then right click and it will apply that for you You can also change the collision uh, shape for your for the sets. So if you go ahead and change this to cube, you may get a faster uh, spawning simulation. So So yeah, you can. This is this can be re really helpful for populating your scenes um, and not having to place them by hand or model them. All right. So another thing I want to show you guys is what to do if you want to spawn a higher quality model. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable these and then I'm going to move these right here go ahead and get rid of these alright so if I want to fill this uh, bag up with uh, Rotini, uh, a Rotini model that I made real quick um, Blender's physics engine isn't so fast at the moment so So you will need to um, you will need to create this will be automated in the upcoming versions, but uh, for now I would suggest creating a bounding box, a custom bounding box for your model, and then dropping that 
a lower quality model and then replacing them by linking the data afterwards so if I go ahead and hit start and then select the keep the bounding box individually I'm going to change this to drop and then increase this randomize the position the rotation a bit and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave join off because we're going to link the the spawned objects afterwards so in order to change the height of the um, the objects, you can go ahead and hold the control key and then use a mouse scroll and that will change the height depending on how high you want it to drop from. So, so if I go ahead and drop these. Let's start over, select the cube, and then we're going to go ahead and I haven't really found a solution for, for getting rid of objects that have fought through, so you will have to manually remove them for now but I am looking into that at the moment so I could fill this up the reason the brush keeps going up is because the, the ray cast is interfering um, so I would suggest trying not to um, have the cursor in the way as you as you drop your objects so so let's say let's say this this is good enough. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and exit by pressing the S key, and then select everything but the ones that fell through. That way, you could just remove them afterwards. Well, actually, the other way around. Deselect the ones you want to keep. Select everything, deselect. And then just select uh, these manually. And then just remove them. Now what I would do is select all of these objects and then select the, the model that you want to replace them with. Hit Control L, and then this menu will pop up. Hit Object Data, and then you will be able to to replace them with your higher quality model. Like I said, I'm gonna automate this process uh, in upcoming versions, and then um, get rid of the that little cursor glitch that happens when it only happens on the top view for some reason but whenever you're in any other view it won't you won't get that but yeah this is uh this is all i wanted to show you guys for this video um go ahead and update the the add-on and um, it's available on Blender Market and Gumroad. I will be uh, increasing the price um, pretty soon, so 
Um, it's available for twenty dollars right now. I hope this tool uh, increases your workflow. But yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, I'll be making more videos uh, soon. Um, I've been pretty sick at the moment, so uh, I will be making uh, documentation for it as well. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.